Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to do a quick video about a refresher of the dream that I had because most of my prophetic dreams are from like two or three years ago and they've only been recently starting again. Um, and so I figured it out the other day but I, I didn't, I, there's so much to say that I haven't had the time to mention this specific video but um, in order to find it it would probably be hard for you to um, to, to pinpoint the specific dream that's kind of why I retold the um, Obama dream um, the other day when I figured out that it was Nimrod um, re resurrected or I think he had many names like Osiris and whatever you can check out Rob Skiba's work on it um, but I had a dream where I was on the seashore and it was it was pitch black but the only thing that was showing light was bombs going off all over the place and it was like high high in the air bombs like high altitude bombs because I could see the the, the light casting down and every time the light would show um, light would show there would be like people frantically running around not knowing where to go hiding under piers and hiding under whatever they could but there was a door and it was a military underground base that was meant for people during like hurricanes and things like that so the door was open and inside to the right was a little guard station like a tiny guard station and the guard was just sitting there and inside this bunker was no one nobody was ready for what was coming and even more than that they couldn't even see where to go to get to the place that was safe so all these people revealing their three days of darkness dreams <clears throat> made me think back to my own dreams that I at the time really didn't understand and if you can picture when the when the light was shining i could see something coming on the ocean at a distance and then immediately in my in the spirit it zoomed into these creatures and i explained it in the last dream so you can go back and check and verify that what i'm saying is what i said before because it's it's just burned into my memory and the only way to describe it is a combination of you know, obviously, I'm not a, an advocate in any way for watching Harry Potter, but I have seen, like, many of the movies when I was younger, not realizing how deeply witchcraft was penetrating, you know, culture. And I wanted to, to watch these movies because my brother, who was going to public school at the time, was reading the books, and I had no idea what they were. I thought it was, like, just simple, stupid, you know, all, like, little stuff. And I really wasn't living in fullness for Christ at the time it was before all of my awakening and everything had really happened so <clears throat> we were actually sitting at my house watching one of them as a family the Howells one like towards the end of them when those creepy things come so these things that were floating on the ocean looked like a combination of the the robots the, the machines in the matrix with the tentacles a combination of that and those howl things from Harry Potter where they have like a black spirit thing behind them and for whatever reason I never watched this type of video but for whatever reason I was getting gas the other day and and there was like a 13 minute video of a survivor of Masonic abuse and she said that her family took her to up in the middle of the night her family handed her to some people they put her in a van and they did ritual abuse to her and after the ritual abuse then this guy again came in with like a skull on his head like 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 um all these satanists do and these all these people had the masonic aprons on and all that but then this other guy with a black hood came in and with a skull on his head and he he was doing something that released oh he oh that's what he did i'm sorry he killed a, a small boy or something like that and made her watch and that triggered 
this darkness to come out of something in the room and it started slowly but it started to penetrate the room so that there was a thick blackness in the room and she knew that he summoned a demon now like all Christians are saying this three days of darkness and whatever comes in this darkness don't let anyone into your home just like they did in, in the days of Moses and I don't think that it's a, a coincidence that the Lord is having me read all of these texts about Moses right now because I don't often read Exodus in full because I've read the Bible and I, I'm, the things that I'm currently studying are, are more of the newer Testament things the things that happen in Jesus's life so that I can compare them um, to, to the past because I do know the Old Testament fairly well from going to Christian school my whole life so um, what I'm reading is like the super gospel which is the combination of all the different gospels that were removed so that I can see the little puzzle pieces that that add up to what we really need right now which is like things like Enoch and to learn about the enemy so that we have something that we can use as like a guidebook to fight the enemy and so so I've heard people say that something about like these creatures can are ripping people apart or something like that and also many people are talking about how they saw giants released and they've seen giants in the streets and they're really loud and they can their voices are very loud because of how big they are and they're super fast and super aggressively athletic and things like that because of their body structure or what have you. I mean, you can watch the videos about the giant of Kandahar that the military had to fight. He was like 12 feet tall or something like that. And, um, and And the Lord said, don't be afraid of these things. Don't be afraid of these, these giants or whatever they are coming. The Lord will protect us. Just like he did in the days of Noah. Just like he did in the days of Moses. Just like he did with Joshua. All the ites were destroyed. And that is what most people that don't understand the Bible use as a reason to say that they think that Yahuwah, the God of the Old Testament, is a, a mean God because he destroyed them when in an actuality what he did is he protected you because if he had let them to keep growing at the race at the pace that they were growing they would have destroyed us like they almost did there was nothing left that was not corrupted except for Noah and his family and that would have just destroyed everything so that the bloodline of Christ could never have come and he's not gonna let that happen and so he, he wiped it clean and made it new and, and, and made it okay for us up until now. But some of the giants did survive that. I heard that there was like a complaint that the devil made and said like, I got like 10% of my like army left. Like how are we gonna have this battle? And so he was allowed to have some left so that the battle could continue because this is supposed to happen for a certain amount of time in order for the souls of men to be to be challenged or, or um, not challenged, but like tested, tested. So in your sojourning here, in your, in your travels here, in your, in your learning experiences, don't stop at the new age. Don't stop at the Hebrew Israelite movement. Don't stop at Buddhism, which empties you and fills you with nothing so that demons can fill you up because you're a vessel. Don't stop at just your church level of Christianity. Don't stop with places where all they do is gossip and talk about one another and 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 set themselves up with the preeminence saying like, oh, you can sit here, but go, you can't sit here because you're not rich, but you are. Go ahead and sit right over there. Oh, yeah, we love this guy because he gives the most and, and all that stuff, that self-righteousness. Don't stop at T.D. Jakes. Don't stop at Joel Austin. Don't stop at Joyce Meyer. Don't stop at these false prophets. Don't stop at uh, 
Clefro, whatever his name, Dollar, who's, you know, found smoking crack in the next day that he's, he's in his church again preaching. Don't stop at, you know, the old rapper Mace's church who admittedly was like doing homosexual stuff and, and, and whatever with Puff Daddy who was a homosexual. You gotta understand something. The military industrial complex and most of the generals and, and higher ups in the military are homosexuals. George Bush and George Bush Sr. were homosexual pedophiles. And Dick Cheney, who was played by Christian Bale, who just gave praise to Satan, I couldn't think of even what the movie was that he was in that he won that award for. He was Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney, he set, he has military people stand in like a, a giant like outdoor arena basically and they let children go and they torture them and, and try to hunt them down and then take them as a prize and do horrible things to them after they, they find them. And this same thing is what they do in other countries with like witch doctors and things like that and the reptilian race. They go, they, they hunt people down for fun. And then like you'll see in the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, that guy, the real guy that, that, that is played by Johnny Depp, that guy saw them drop a child that was dead down to a bunch of black guy, black hooded people down below. He was with them when this happened and he saw all this happen. And then in that movie, you hear some guy talking on the phone saying, yeah, somebody cut somebody's head off and uh, did some satanic stuff or whatever. And then later in the movie, those two guys, the main characters, they have the vial of the pineal gland, which is the satanic serum that Satanists basically use as a drug because they they hunt these kids down until they're so afraid that their bodies are stressed out and all that stress goes into their pineal gland and that is what they use. It's called like uh, cr like hydronochrome or, or so something like that. So I don't even want to talk about it, but it's like some drug that is for Satanists. That's how wicked these people are. Just like in the days of Egypt, how wicked they were, trying to sleep with their wives, trying to hunt their children down in the walls, like the Nazis. And and I just wanna say one thing about the, the Nazis real quick, which maybe not, not a lot of people know, okay? And it, and it goes back to Lucifer. It goes back to Satan. Most people think, like a lot of the death metal, the people that have the black clothes, that wear the black clothes, do the, you know, you see them at the satanic movements and all that stuff. Most people think, like those people, that like Satan is their buddy, like Satan is their friend, even though they don't believe in him, just the fact that they have a home to feel comfortable in because the rest of the world seems to not agree with those people because maybe they were hurt once in their life and they just never let that hatred go right so they feel like they belong with the darkness because they weren't accepted by the light but that's not even true because satan lucifer he wants to wear a suit he wants to be praised like a god he doesn't want to hang out with you people that are like the kids that hang out at hot topic he doesn't want nothing to do with that kind of stuff that's all just a trick to make you part of a club that he you know established so that you'll never realize that you are in the words of Jesus Christ himself, have I not said that ye are gods? Because we are the sons of the living father. And even the reptilian race says that we are kings. They say that, and yet they still are forced to eat us. What does he say to the serpent in the garden? Ye shall eat dust. What are we? Dust. Get it? So they are forced to survive off of eating the human race. It's a cannibalistic system. Cain and Abel. It's a cannibalistic system. And there are very few compared to us. There are fewer reptilians than there are human beings. But if you'll notice, and I, I, I'm saying two parts of that movie, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but if you'll notice in one of the scenes he's tripping on like mescaline or something like that and he's in this room and the woman at the front desk 
turns into a start like a, a a giant electric eel and comes out his face, right? And then he's in a room, and he's or he's in front of her and he's freaking out like he's tweaking, and he turns around and all the people around him turn into to serpents, like living human being looking like serpents, right? And they're eating like bugs and like worms and stuff like that. Now think about that for a second. Your your mind, your visual conception when you take drugs is altered. Like mushrooms or whatever, you start seeing stuff, you start seeing like, you know, start seeing Vin Diesel and lampshades and weird crap like that and you're like, or teardrops or spiders coming from the ceiling or whatever, right? Now, He's looking around the room and the whole room is all serpents. All of them are, are like reptilian creatures. And he says something about them. He, he, he like exposes the fact that they're all reptilians. And they all go <gasps> like this. Because it's not that he, ex it's not that he like just said something weird and, and crazy in the middle of the hotel. It's that he exposed them. Get it? And we all know what's happening to Johnny Depp right now. He's being attacked by all of his lawyers because just like Michael Jackson, they don't care about you. They just want your money. And once you sell your soul to the devil for music and fame and all the other stuff, that's it. He owns you and he'll use you till he's done with you. That's why Johnny Depp, you'll see some of his interviews and, and a couple other musicians saying like, Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't really have an option, like, to to to, not, to stop doing these movies. Like, they have to do this stuff, right? And uh, I I know I'm just kind of flowing on a tangent right now, but I'm trying to expose the darkness. I'm trying to expose the fact that these people are evil, and. If you are not protected by the blood of Jesus Christ during what's going to happen soon, then you don't know if you're going to make it. You don't know if you're going to make it through. I pray that you do. I pray that whatever happens that you find shelter and that you somehow escape this. But it, this is something that's a little bit strange. In that 15-year-old Jewish boy that just recently had the vision of, of heaven, when the Lord comes down and splits the Mount of Olives and protects Israel and protects the people that had been obeying the Torah and, and following God's commandments and also doing charity, which is like honoring your neighbor and helping your neighbor, those people, it says that the Lord can smell them. He can smell the ones that are righteous. And in fact, in Israel, your sense of smell was very, very important because it let you know what part of the land you were in. It's actually, uh, oddly enough, one of the main reasons I quit smoking cigarettes is because I was losing my sense of smell. And I, then I read that along with hearing um, a, a Native American man, Noel Grayson, who wasn't even a Christian, I don't think, saying that the Great Spirit breathed his life into us and that is a gift. And when I heard somebody that may not even be a Christian, and I was saying that I was a Christian, say something like that, it made me rethink why am I smoking cigarettes, along with uh, another man's vision where he said that the people that smoke aren't going to heaven because you're not, you're not loving the Lord your God with all of your mind, all of your body, and all of your soul. Because when you're smoking, you're killing yourself and you don't even know what they put in cigarettes honestly and even further than that the original story of the animal that brought satan up to paradise after he was cast out to tempt eve while adam was praying no, none of the animals would listen to him except the camel a baby camel flew back then i guess they had wings it the baby camel flew satan up to paradise so that he could go up there and tempt eve now this is just a story and I understand it is not in the Bible and I understand you may not might not even believe that a camel could have wings but it is odd that cigarettes have a pyramid and a camel on them isn't it a little odd 
Isn't that strange? Isn't it strange that Barack Obama is a leading advocate for marijuana and a leading and and a smoker himself? He smokes cigarettes and if you read it, the the book that that guy in Chicago hit one of his gay lovers wrote that they used to have sex all the time and smoke crack together and you look at Obama half the time he looked like he was high as a kite you know what I'm saying just just factual things factual things the fact that that the Secret Service says that that Michelle is Michael they call Michelle Michael she's like she looms over other people she like could have been in the WNBA but I know there are big women there's big women everywhere her body dynamics are incorrect for a woman look at her hands look at all the fat how, how many times she was wearing a dress and you could see her genitalia and it was male and then you look back on the, the Egyptian hieroglyphs and the Egyptian like statues and they look like Obama and Michelle Michael and then Joan Rivers comes out and says that Michelle is a man and all of a sudden she's dead a few weeks later that's what happens Jim Carrey exposed the Illuminati on live television and I don't know how long after or whatever but his girlfriend committed suicide supposedly there's too many people committing suicide all of a sudden like that were happy people and had good lives with kids and everything and they were fine they had like life was good for those people and all of a sudden they commit suicide or their whole family just drops dead their whole family turns into a murder suicide and then you watch movies like Sniper with Mark Wahlberg and realize that like they have they have like mach like things they can hook up to your arms to make you look like you shot yourself and stuff like that guys we're dealing with a war that is a spiritual war just as much as it is a physical war and in fact the spiritual portion of the war is much more real than this physicality even can be and imagine how many times a day the Lord Jesus Christ protects you imagine how many times a day an evil man is protected because down the river he, the Lord knows that he might have a chance at redemption because there's still one more person that's going to tell him about Christ. And I read an interview recently that Johnny Depp was, was you know, smoking hash and, and drinking wine in his house and he's got all his, you know, money and all that stuff. He's got everything he could possibly want at his mansion and all that, and he's scared to death to even go outside. But he's forced to keep making movies because he's, when you sign a contract with the devil, and you can go back and look at look at the early movies people do. Most of the people that are famous now, their some of their first movies were evil things. Like Jim Carrey was in a vampire. One of his first movies was like a vampire. Then like like Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, you know, uh, John Leguizamo drag queens they dress like women and then they become famous you know and just a whole host of things like that like Sandra Bullock whether you believe she's a, a hermaphrodite or a man or a woman or whatever it doesn't you know that that's beside the point but she was in a movie Practical Magic with Nicole Kidman both of those people are said to be transgender and it's very, very hard to tell because they're so good at this. They, like, grow them from, like, childhood to do this. Like Jennifer Aniston. Like, I heard that the entire cast of Friends used to yell multiple times during cuts in the set, Hail Satan, just like Christian Bale did, openly. And, like I said, why do you think he said that as he receives an award for, for portraying Dick Cheney? Because Dick Cheney is one of the most evil men you could possibly imagine in this world and he did so many crimes against humanity and there's a special place for people like that a special place set aside for people like that in hell because the people that hurt children those people are going to be so sorry that they ever ever hurt children that were God's children and, you know, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, 
I know it was sort of a rambling session, but I just wanted to put some puzzle pieces together for you so that you can get the world that we're living in and how evil it is how messed up it is and I know most people know what I'm talking about but if you if somebody catches this video and you don't know these things just drive down the road in any state any place you go drive down the road I just passed about seven or eight Masonic signs on the side of the road this is, and it also says like the International Rotary Club all the ABC agencies and all the Masons and all these people all the judges all the all the people in politics they're all part of this guys the simple person that goes to work and drives a plow truck, the guy that is a carpenter, the guy that just wants to make it to the end of the week, the guy that goes to the bar just to forget his troubles at the end of the week, that is not a Christian, that doesn't even want to think about that because the religious people are a joke to him because they're all self-righteous and they don't practice what they preach. That guy does not necessarily know or care about what I'm talking about because my own dad, who's a Christian, doesn't want to know this stuff because he just like... It's too much for him. It's like in the Matrix, you can't wake somebody up when they're past a certain age. It's the same, it's very similar to here. And look at the people that made the Matrix. Those two dudes are both transgender now. Because that movie, The Matrix, although it has tells you a lot of truth about the world, that same movie, at the end, you'll see Neo like laying back like he's on a cross, and then he's injected with that basically you know, microchip type technology to the back of his spine and he helps the robot save mankind's consciousness. That's a mockery of, of, of Jesus Christ in its, in its most fullest form. And they made a trilogy of it, three movies. You don't think that's a little odd? They made three movies of it and they make Star Wars movies. There's th always three of them when they come out. The Transformers movie, the bad guy is named Megatron. The angel e Enoch, when he was translated into an angel, his name was Metatron, if you read Third Enoch. It's like they take everything that is good and they turn it into bad. Notice that Optimus Prime, the good guy in Transformers, is there's only a few good guys, but they're against a ton of bad guys. Doesn't that kind of make sense that like the heavenly host, the good guys in real life are a many, but the the army of Satan is few. It's all backwards. That's what Jonathan Cleck is saying too all the time is that everything in this world is backwards. It's upside down. You have to flip it upside down to understand what they're doing, what they are trying to hide from you. And I just plead the blood of Jesus over every single person that watches this video. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, my family, my mom and dad and my brother just went to Florida. I pray for their safety while they're gone for this week because this is the first vacation they've gone on in a long time. I'm driving my dad's truck right now because they're gone and I just, I just wanted to get and I still will be getting out as much possible information as I can in these last days before we lose whatever you know, before whatever interrupts the current ability to get this information out. So God bless you all. Lord Jesus, please plead your blood over all the people that are watching this. In your, your precious name, I pray. Amen. Have a great day, guys.